Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Leeds, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're playing more of the Battle Rush Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which we have just 8 seconds to take our turn and 15 seconds to choose our cards in between rounds. That means this mode is all about speed, and today we have an incredibly speedy deck that is also the perfect Halloween theme. So let's go give it a look. So today we'll be playing a Monsters, Fruits of Yisketh, Gurnacore spamming deck that is incredibly powerful because it can score a bunch of points every turn without requiring us to take any clicks. In fact, it can score all those points even after we've already passed. So how do we make that happen? The centerpiece of the deck is the Bloody Mistress slash Gurnacora. So once we get up to 25 points in one row, then we can transform the Bloody Mistress into Gurnacora. She'll keep the same amount of power, but she will spawn into Gurnacora's fruits, which are one power thrive cards. And for every Gurnacora's fruit that we control, our Gurnacora gets boosted by one point at the end of our turn. So if we have multiple Gurnacoras or multiple Gurnacora's fruits, then that can turn into a lot of points every Every turn and that still activates even if we've already passed so that means once we have that set up we can pass early and make it really hard for our opponent to catch us as we continue to score more and more points but how do we make more copies of Gurnacora and the Gurnacora's fruits well obviously we have our leader ability which is going to give us one of our Gurnacora's fruits so that's one extra way to get one extra point per Gurnacora per turn but the extra Gurnacora part that is the trickier aspect. So usually what we're going to want to do is start off with a cave troll in the range row to keep our setup safe. And then after that, we're going to want to put Weavis Incantation here in the range row behind that cave troll to keep her a little bit safer. Technically, again, you don't need the cave troll, but most of the time your opponent sees Weavis, they're going to try to answer. Then once you've done that, you play the Bloody Mistress, which technically speaking, playing her in the melee row where you have more room is kind of nice. But again, to keep her safe, sometimes you might need to use her in the range row. Then, after that, the Arrakis Queen to consume Gurnacora, and in doing so, create an extra copy of her when this Arrakis Queen gets destroyed. And because you already have Weavis Incantation on the board, that means Weavis is going to proc that Death Wish immediately. And then if you actually consume Arrakis Queen, you can get an extra copy of Gurnacora as well. So that's two copies of Gurnacora on the board in that round, and one extra one in your graveyard, which might be relevant for reasons we'll talk about in a minute. So that's one of the ways to create additional Gurnacoras. But there are still ways to get additional Gurnacoras even beyond those extra two from the combination of Weavis and Arrakis Queen. So not strictly necessary, but if you're getting a little bit greedy, you could proactively put an Iteran out there, and because he's going to give you an extra copy of anything you spawn in once per turn, that can activate on the turn in which you use the Arrakis Queen to consume Gurnacora, and that's one extra copy, and then if you wait until your next turn and then consume the Arrakis Queen with Weavis on that turn, that's one extra Gurnacora on top of that, so that's two more Gurnacoras, and the other thing you can do is you can also use Abaya. Once you have used the Arrakis Queen to consume Gurnacora, but you have not yet consumed that actual Arrakis Queen, then Abaya can activate one extra round of Death Wish on that Arrakis Queen and give you an extra Gurnacora that way. This also could combine with Iteran as well. At that point, you're going to be completely out of board space because there's only so many Gurnacoras you can fit in a row, and because each Gurnacora is going to try to spawn in uh, Fruits of Yisgith, it's going to be that much more crowded still. So again, it's greedy, so you don't really need to do this, but technically speaking, it is an option if you want to try to get a little bit more Gurnacora action happening. So that's what you're trying to do in round one, is basically get at least two Gurnacoras on the board and get a Sabbath so that you can activate their Sabbath ability to actually transform them from Bloody Mistress into Gurnacora and start generating all those points. But then... Once you've done that, you can probably guess where this is going. At that point, you use Witch's Sabbath to get the Gurnacoras from your graveyard back onto the board. And you want to do this as soon as possible, and you want to do it in round two, ideally. Maybe push for the 2-0, but what happens here is that means you're going to get two or three of your Gurnacoras. They're going to stay Gurnacora when they're in your graveyard, so they're going to be seven power Gurnacora. Notably, Gurnacora, if you summon her directly from your graveyard, does not spawn in these Gurnacora's fruits, and Gurnacora without Gurnacora's fruits are just seven point bodies that don't actually get boosted. So make sure you use your leader ability, but if you do this turn one, if you use the Witch's Sabbath to get two or three Gurnacoras, the other card might end up being a Cave Troll, but if you have created a bunch of additional Gurnacoras in round one, doing all that greedy extra spawning stuff with Iteran and whatnot that we were talking about, then it's just increasing the likelihood that you happen to get more Gurnacoras and not a Cave Troll in that last spot. 
But either way, it's going to be 21 points once you use Witch's Sabbath to get three of the seven point bodies back on the board. So it means you will not have Sabbath active. That's actually a good thing because that means, as we were saying, the Gurner Cores, if they immediately get summoned out, they do not summon Gurner Chorus Fruits, which means they're pretty weak. The only thing you're going to get it boosted from is the Gurner Chorus Fruit that you start off with from your leader ability. So by not being at Sabbath, they will flip back into the Bloody Mistress. Then on your next turn, you just play one more card in that row to get up to 25 points, or you use a special to boost them up. Then you will be at Sabbath. They'll flip back into Gurnacora. They will, at that point, spawn in the Gurnacora's Fruits. And then, once again, they are actually dangerous because you have so many Gurnacora's Fruits on the board. They'll get boosted every turn. And if you play even further, the Gurnacora's Fruits being Thrive Engines are also capable of scoring some points as well. So that's the round two strategy, is basically once you get the Gurnacora's and make sure that you have the Gurnacora's Fruits to accompany them, then that could basically be when you pass because that's going to give you a ton of points every turn and then you can pass and your opponent's going to find it pretty hard to keep pace with that. And so if they do manage to catch you though, what you can then do is use... Alyssa Henson to move Witch's Sabbath from your graveyard back into your deck and then replay Witch's Sabbath to once again repeat your round two strategy and just summon out those Bloody Mistresses slash Koras. Again, make sure that you hopefully allow them initially to not have Sabbath so that they flip back into the Bloody Mistress. And then once you play one more card in that same row, get up to 25 points, they'll flip back into Koras, create the Koras fruits, give you those Thrive Engines, and give you the cards that actually make the Koras capable of getting boosted up every turn. So with all that being said, it's actually quite simple. It's all just built around the Gurnacoras and Bloody Mistresses and the nuances of making sure that you always have as many of these on the board as possible and as many Gurnacoras fruits on the board as possible to give them as many boosts at the end of your turn as you can. When it works, it is amazing because of how many points it can score without requiring any clicks at all and able to pass basically as early as you'd like. So let's go see it in action. All right, so going up against monsters here and we'll go first. Okay, so we have... A raucous Queen, we have one of our crones, but not the other. And Iteran can potentially help. Okay, there's Bloody Mistress, though. So that's definitely nice. I think we'll... Oof. Yeah, we might get a little bit riskier and start with Bloody Mistress. Should be going uh, with this first as well. Just get the, get the boost on the Thrive Engine initially. So we should be going uh, Defender first, really. But we are going to need this, I think. Or, oh no, we do have... Oh, yeah, if we want to get you. We're going to need this. Okay, I think we're still going to be quick enough here, thankfully. So we can finish the job here on this turn. And there are our three Bloody Mistresses. And technically speaking, getting Iteran down here would be really nice. That can help us reach Sabbath if we were to put him here, although that's going to fill this row. But maybe we're okay with that. So it means we are going to spawn a lot of these fruits, but we're going to run out of space. Iteran is uh, actually hindering our ability to spawn them in at this point. All right, they go Catechin. This is probably where we pass. Because with all these Gurnacoras and all these Gurnacoras fruits on the board, I mean, we could drop a Witch Apprentice if we really wanted to. Yeah, sure, we'll drop one Witch Apprentice. Then we'll end the round, just get these a little bit higher so they aren't as easily removable. But we're generating a ton of points every turn, and we will get these boosts even if we pass, which is why, yeah, usually you want to pass pretty early once you get this stuff set up. Okay, and don't really need you anymore. Okay, we're going to need to use Witch's, Wispus Tribute to get this Witch's Sabbath, but now we just have it in hand, so that works as well. So that's the plan. We're basically just going to replay that. And let's try to do this first, if we can. And then Witch's Sabbath. We'll get us our Gurnacoras back. They'll flip back over, though. But in doing so, we lose the Doom status on them. So we can actually repeat this process again if we would like. We just need to, of course, hit that Sabbath threshold, which we, I believe, will do if we go Witch Apprentice here 
on our next turn. Four, let's see, we need four points. So if we do this, that should be sufficient. And it's an entire row of Gurnacoras and Gurnacoras fruits. So we will pass now. Or we could, again, just drop a, a Witch Apprentice just to boost these guys up, because otherwise, yeah, the bleed. Oh, I'm surprised they're not going after them with the bleed. So otherwise, it's going to be fairly simple for them to destroy these. Okay, but their boosts per turn are going to be much less than our boosts per turn. So we, if we're going for the 2-0, I mean, I suppose we could just... Just continue to go a little bit further here. Trigger the Thrives. I mean, Cave Troll at this point, we would have used it in round one if we were going to use it at all to protect our setup. And obviously, we've already set everything up here, so it's not really as much of a concern anymore. So I think we might just pass in our next turn. And... Force them to try to catch us, because even after passing, we are still going to get... What is this? 21... Plus two more 23 points worth of boosts every turn. Obviously, they're bleeding us a little bit here, but it's going to be pretty difficult for them to catch us. Because the numbers keep going up, and if they do catch us, we will still have, what, eight cards in round three, and they're probably going to have a lot less than that. And we might even be able to repeat this combo once again if we are able to get... Uh, our Witch's Sabbath from our graveyard back into our deck. But at this point, it's looking like we're just going 2-0. Because they are struggling to catch us here. And they're running out of board space as well. And Gale... I mean, they could destroy a Gurnacor's fruit, which they arguably should have done previously. Oh, they need to put him in the melee row, though. Oh, man, so they can't catch us. We will win 2-0 with... With five cards still in our hand. All right, so going up against Skellige here. And they'll go first. All right, so we have Weavis. We have the Raucous Queen. We are Defender. We can get Gurnacor with Mata. Let's see if we can find a more direct route here, maybe. There is Bloody Mistress, okay. So we should have all the pieces we're looking for there, I believe. They're going to be Raids decks. So they're going to have lots of damage. So can we get through quickly enough is going to be the primary question with all of our setup before they start destroying things. Okay, Berserker gives them a little bit of extra damage. I'm actually a little bit surprised they're going that route, though. Get you down. Next turn is going to be our Bloody Mistress. Okay, they're trying to hit Cave Troll. It's not enough to threaten us too much. I think as much as I would love to go Melee Row here, where we have more space to spawn in more Gurnacorus Fruits, given how we know they have a bunch of damage, I don't think we can risk that. Okay, so now we do this. And we consume you. And that'll automatically trigger this with you. Now... Sometimes if you have a Baya in particular, it can make sense to wait. Oh, this is dangerous, though. This is very dangerous. Okay, it's three damage. They might have enough damage with whatever they're getting out here to cause some trouble. But no, not really. So now we do this. And let's just throw you down as well, I suppose. So you should flip, and that should give us... Or Gurnacorus Fruits, which means we're going to get these boosting up every turn, which means they are not going to be able to catch us. They know. So they just pass now, and we'll win uneven. All right, and so I think we might push for the 2-0 here, and we actually definitely do, like, long rounds. So Mata helps us extend the round. Don't really need Whispering Hillock much anymore. We're going to Witch of Sabbath to get stuff back, and we... Okay. Yeah, I think we will still do it. We do get our defender out here. There was a chance there's going to be a Gurnacora or a defender, but we actually prefer that we don't hit Sabbath immediately, because that means that these flip back, 
And it, only once we hit Sabbath will they flip into the Gurnacora. We got rid of the Doom status in the process, so that's good. It means we can replay in the next round as well. And it also means that we're going to gain the Gurnacora's fruits. Once we have one more point in this row, at least. They're going to obviously keep on trying to damage, and a lot of damage at that to Cave Troll. So we need ooh, enough points here that it's going to be a little tricky in that row. A little tricky in that row. We do need one more boost here, but they're, I assume, going to be pretty merciless going after these. Rock is not fast enough, though. Not unless they leader ability here. Now we have 20 points, which means this would be enough. We do that, and that means we get them flipping back into Gurnacora. Again, no Doom status on the Gurnacoras themselves, so we can get them back out with another Witch's Sabbath later on. And so I think what we'll do is maybe we Mata, just to make this round go a little bit longer. Trigger these Thrives to make it a little bit harder to get rid of those. And we'd also like to use Royal Decree to get uh, Alyssa out here. So we can get Witch's Sabbath from our graveyard back into our deck here and replay that so that we can get these Gurner Cores back out in round three if necessary. So that, I think, is the plan. And get this. And they'll just forfeit. They know they can't catch us. All right, it's going up against Syndicate here. And we'll go first. All right, so we have Weavis. We have, we can get Bloody Mistress there, but we are missing other components for sure. Okay, that can certainly help. As could that. Okay, I think we can make this work at this stage. I think we can make this work at this stage. No Defender. But if we do this... Uh, excuse me. If we do this... We can get our Defender. We'd also like to make this happen as well. Okay, Tax Collector. They'll generate their coins. Next, we're going to go Weavis. But she's going to have to wait a little bit before we get our preferred target down here. And we're, in fact, going to need to use... Mata before we can make that happen. Because there is Bloody Mistress. Would even consider dropping Iteran first. Which will eventually lead us to spawning in an additional copy of the Bloody Mistress, which I think I think that might even be worth doing here. It's a little bit greedy. It's going to take a little bit longer to completely pull off our combo, but long term, it is a little bit better. So now we go here, but we don't consume yet. They're just focusing all, on all their coin generation, and that's fine for now. But now we go here, and we consume. And we get the extra copy from Itaran. And technically speaking, the more we wait... Oh, I was going to say the more we wait, the more we can uh, get the extra procs from Itaran. But then again... Uh, we are out of board space here, so it'd actually be kind of nice if they were to remove something. Be a bit of a favor to us, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, if you want to do that, that would be kind of helpful. If I'm being honest, does that work now? But if we do this, we will still spawn in another Bloody Mistress. So that's good. She'll flip. She obviously doesn't have room for the current core's fruit. Okay, so it means we will win this round. We... Almost had the opportunity to create even more Gunnercoras, but we just ran out of space. Abaya could have been another way to make it happen, but now what we're looking for is Witch's Sabbath, or a tutor to get Witch's Sabbath. So that is the key thing we need to keep our eyes out for, and we did not see it here. So I think in that case, we're just looking to drive past. We, of course, won round one, and we did play more cards than our opponent. They'll just do their coin generation. Alright, and Wispus Tribute can uh, activate 
our, or give us, tutor out our, our Witch's Sabbath, so that's key. Don't really need you anymore. And then that probably means we're mostly looking for specials here, to be honest. Otherwise, we're going to run out of board space, so this probably will do. Okay, they're going to get their Defender. Just want to see... There's a chance they'll get some Range Row, Row Lock stuff, so I think we want to go Melee Row with our Witch's Sabbath. Yeah, so, okay, we got a Defender. Oh, we should do this too, if we can. So we actually want these to flip back over, because otherwise, if they come back out as Gurnacora, they don't spawn in the Gurnacora's fruits. So they aren't worth all that much. So now we need to hit our Sabbath quickly here to get them out. Oh, and you're going to get destroyed quickly. So at this point, we should put you here. Does mean it's going to take up more space in this row, but we will spawn in those Gurnacora's fruits. And now these are going to be worth a lot of points per turn. But this cave troll is going to get destroyed quickly. So let's see. At this stage, I guess we just go get Thrive on the board. Boost up the Gurnacorus fruits a bit in the process. Blender's crew, I mean, they're just going all out with the, the coin generation strategies. And. I suppose we could infuse some more people with Thrive while we're at it. And we might want to boost up this cave troll to try to keep it alive a little bit longer. Ah, I mean, that maybe that's not all that necessary. You're going to destroy this, I assume? Oh, no, cave troll. Oh, very, very well done. Wow, impressive move. Okay, let's just power you up, I suppose. Oh, well, we really should be destroying Kadron, shouldn't we? Or you, for that matter. That was a missed opportunity, I think. For that reason. And we need to proc this Thrive. So that you get big enough. That you cannot be destroyed. Otherwise, our source of boosting is going to go away. We can still get this Sabbath boost triggering here as well. But yeah, we might have missed our opportunity to shut down their setup. Oh, we did. Definitely. But uh, let's see. So now if we go here... We consume you. Get the other one out. Because our boosting has been significantly slowed at this stage. And purification also would have been great, but we have our uh, lock removal. Not the same as purification. It's going to be close, I think. It's going to be close. Okay. Let's focus on boosting up the stuff that does not have these coin damage setups anymore. Because, yeah... The more of them they put on, the more we're just allowing them to deal damage to us. I think it's going to be really, really close. Obviously, we want you to stay alive, though. Um, yeah, I mean, somebody at this point. They don't have room for this last card, presumably, but they can spend coins. And we, with our last card, are not getting that much. Obviously, we'll get the boost from these guys, but they're going to get some damage when they earn coins at the end of their turn. So where will that leave us? It's going to be close, but I think we have this. And that we do. All right, so going up against Skoytel here, and we'll go first. And we have a Rockus Queen, so we don't need Whispering Hillock. We have Cave Troll. We can use Mata to get one of our key cards. We also have Weavis and Witch's Sabbath we can use later on. So this is looking pretty good for round one here. We are missing Bloody Mistress, but we can use Mata to get her. Oh, well, we can't go Mata first. So let's just use the throwaway card here because we're going to need Mata to give us Gurnacore. Obviously, that's pretty important. And yeah, that I'm pretty sure is our highest card here. They'll go... Okay, they're setting up, well, Symbiosis. That makes sense. Sure. So let's go Mata. Make sure we get Gurnacore. Oh, and we technically should be using our leader ability here as well. Okay, Dunka for them, giving some hand boosting. Sneak in that leader ability. And then let's go with Cave Troll. So that on our next turn, if we play Weavis, she'll be protected. 
than Hamadryad, so yep, more symbiosis for them. Now let's use you. Not gonna consume anything just yet. And now they start breaking out the nature card, so they're triggering the symbiosis. But now we use Bloody Mistress. Still not gonna consume you yet. Waiting to use the Arrakis Queen. And uh, it actually does transform into Gurnacora. So that's not ideal because that means we're gonna create a copy of Gurnacora when we break out the Arrakis Queen. And that means that we're gonna miss out on spawning in additional copies of the Gurnacora's fruits. So more Gurnacora's, yes, but less Gurnacora's fruits to accompany them. So it's just getting boosted by three per Gurnacora, which is not fantastic, but it is enough to dissuade our opponent from playing further here. So we'll take the round one win. All right, and now we're just looking for what well, we actually have, which is Sabbath. But if we do Iteran first, we can get a little bit greedy here and use him with our leader ability. Oh, but I actually wanted him range row, I think, because I'm hoping to use Gurnacora in the melee row because we know they have a row locked Frexnit that we don't really want to bring back in that range row. And we also, for the same reason we were just talking about, don't really want to immediately activate Sabbath, otherwise... We're not going to get the additional Gurnacora's fruit spawning in, so yeah, we'll go melee row. Initially have Sabbath, and that will immediately boost up our Gurnacora's, so it might not be optimal, but it is still enough for them to rage quit. So there's a look at a Monsters Gurnacora deck for the new Battle Rush seasonal event. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, and leave a comment down below. Let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions you'd like us to experiment with next. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.